are listening to the Barbara May Show, the place where we discuss all that really matters. We will cover all you need to know about lifestyle, health, spirituality, and plus so much more. Are you ready? Let's dive in. You are listening to episode 18 with Samantha Messiahs. In this episode, we will tap into a very sensitive topic. We are going to be talking about the baby loss. Samantha and I have decided to record this episode to raise awareness around this subject. Samantha shares her personal story about losing baby Owen in order to help thousands of women out there who suffered or suffers from miscarriages or baby loss. Let's dive in. Hello, Samantha. Welcome to my podcast. My first question for you is what are you grateful for? Being alive. Being alive. I actually did my 10 things I was grateful for this morning, which I have been getting into the habit of every morning and every night, which has been wonderful. So I just write five things that I'm currently grateful for right now. Anything that comes to mind. It could be the sunshine coming through the window. It could be this lovely warm bed I'm in. It could be the fresh water that I've got next to my bed. But today I was particularly grateful for being alive and then I then go into the extra last five I actually go into things that I'm grateful for that have not yet manifested so I just put that I'm grateful for those as well so yeah I'm grateful for being alive thank you yay I love I love the gratitude practice isn't it amazing it just put you in a such a such a beautiful mood for the rest of the day no yes (laughs) yes Definitely. Okay, so on today's today's episode, we are going to be talking about the baby loss, um, a very set topic. Mm-hmm. Um, before we dive in and I'll let you show your story, I just wanted to say that uh, um, one out of four women experiencing miscarriages around the world, and I truly believe that is more than that, um, but those numbers are not recorded because people do decide not to talk about it. Hence why I'm so excited to have you here today and for you to share your story. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, that's it's so true. It's so true. I had I've had quite a few friends and I was quite shocked after my sort of baby loss. Um, a late miscarriage baby loss is quite hard because legally you need to get to a certain point of weeks before they actually say it to it's a stillbirth. And I was, was close to that, but the class it now is a miscarriage. Um, but one thing that dawned on me after going through all of this was how many of my friends and how many people it actually happened to. I couldn't believe it. One, it helped me realize I'm not alone and that I'm going to get through it. Two, it gave me hope because if all of these women that I know and respect and love have had, some of them have had multiple miscarriages and now they've all gone on to having healthy babies and it gives me hope that you know, I can have a healthy baby and I can have a family of my own. And yeah, and it's just, it was just insane. But yeah. No, of course you can. Everybody's there. Like, um, I have so many friends who's been, who's been through this, but they just do decide not to share it because it's just such an intimate thing. And um, I don't know how you feel about this, but I had suffered multiple miscarriages. And when, when I had the miscarriage, I didn't necessarily want to share it with the world, but the reason was because I didn't want this sympathy cuddle and this sympathy hug. I wanted people to know and I wanted people to respect what I went through because it's it's such a hard thing to go through. But I didn't want to talk about it. You know, like the fact that I knew that there were so many women out there and they went through that, that was, that was helpful. And that is one of the reasons why I have asked you to come on a podcast because um yeah because your story um yeah it's just very 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 um tough one I had miscarriages um the one was before 12 weeks and I lost twins I told you about before at the recording um so one went uh, six weeks and 12 weeks and then I had to deliver a baby but I know what you just said. It doesn't count as a stillborn. For me, it was a stillborn because it did look like a baby, even though it was 17 weeks old. It doesn't count. It still counts as a miscarriage. Um, and and it was just something, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, very, very, very sad. A very, very difficult situation to deal with. Um, can you share your story, Samantha? Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. So I'm, again, I am very, very honest I'm one of those people and people say sometimes I'm too honest, but 
the truth the truth can hurt and the truth is pretty dark at times but it's by sharing our truth that can help inspire others and help encourage others to seek that help and to know that they're not afraid and to find their voice so I when people say are you okay to share your story in detail for me it's okay because I, I can share it in detail and I can be honest and I can share how difficult it was so my story never been pregnant before I've been with my incredible partner for 12 years met at university with lockdown 2020 our wedding that we had planned was postponed and we decided to think right do you want to try for a baby now then we were the plan was to get married and have a baby after that was just always in my sub mind and sort of subconscious my adopted parents were always very much get married before you have kids and I thought well it's the 21st century not many people are doing that anymore it's fine if you want a child you don't need to be married um so we went for it and we tried it a few weeks I had you know the the spotting of, of the period and and I was like oh oh well, this is odd I, I should be coming on you know to, so we did the pregnancy test I was pregnant I was like oh my god I was like how easy was that but at the same time I know a lot of people it can be very difficult to conceive it can be very difficult to get pregnant because of you know reasons genetically or reasons to do with your mindset like if, if you're constantly stressed and it's maybe not going to work and other different reasons but for me it was very easy to conceive and so we got, got pregnant, pregnancy test, everything was fine. We were so happy. We were so happy. Um, and then we were saying, well, we won't tell people because we'll wait until those that 12 week safety date. You know, a lot loads of people wait for this 12 week miracle safety date until they can announce it and share it publicly and share it with the friends and family. And, you know, I was getting it's funny because the whole pregnancy and it was beautiful. You know, don't get me wrong, I had all those symptoms of the, the sore breasts, the bloat, the cramps, the mood swings. Um, yeah, and then I had the, with my taste buds, I had so many food aversions. So I was on, on what people would call the, the, the beige diet. So anything that was beige, so chips, crackers, toast, crumpets, <laughs> potatoes, literally, I couldn't. But I'm quite, I like whole foods and plant-based. I like all my healthy smoothies and my vegetables. And, and I couldn't, the taste of spinach was disgusting. The smell of hummus and soy milk was disgusting. And I was like, oh my God, what am I going to, what am I going to eat? Because I don't want to eat anything. So I literally, beige diet it was. I went to the, um, the midwife and I did, I did question. I said, right, I've been, I've been vegan for seven years and I'm wondering, you know, is is, is that still okay so she said my blood test she went you are completely healthy she went I'm actually surprised your iron levels are higher than my daughter's and she eats meat so she was like what are you doing I was like oh well I have my beans and my, my legumes and my spinach and things but she went no perfectly healthy I was like oh okay then that's fine she did all my tests everything was fine and she said um I said what about this beige diet and she went it's okay eat what you can eat so I was like okay fantastic she went it'll eventually go so we got to the 12-week scan we went to the hospital and my partner had to wait in the car park because of COVID. You can only allowed in. So I had my mask on, went in, sat in the waiting room, got called in. And I was lying there really obviously anxious and, and excited at the same time because my belly's a little bit extended. And, and I just, you know, this is all completely new. So new. And for a long time in my life, I didn't want any children. I sort of had this resentment to children because I'd gone through so much trauma as a child so when I used to be out and I'd be walking down the street and I'd see a mum push a baby or I'd see a mum and a dad hold a child and swing them up in the air it would really hurt me it would really hurt me and I would I used to think this world was a very cruel place and I thought I don't want to bring a child into this world but after falling in love and, and healing to a, a massive extent I was like no I'm ready for a child I'd love to bring a child up into this world I feel I could pass on a lot of knowledge and a lot of wisdom and hopefully raise a beautiful human being so um, I was lying there in this in this room in this small room with some lovely midwives there was a midwife oh, I'm trying to remember Al was her name Alison oh, I can't quite remember her name um there was two of them anyway and we were I lied down and tried to lift your tummy up put this stuff on and started using that little device to scan the belly to see where the baby is. And we could see baby. We could see the heartbeat flittering. And it was like, oh, yeah. And I 
never I just looked at the scan and she was like fantastic and she went hmm 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 and she went there's a lot of fluid around baby I said okay she went hmm, how are you feeling I said I'm feeling good I was like well, can you see that so she showed me showed me the pic the scan I mean the picture and she and it literally I've got the um the the scan photograph and it we we called it the spacesuit because it looked like he was in a spacesuit. He was this whole all around his head, all around his body. It literally looked like he was in a little spacesuit. And we called him our spaceman him in the beginning. And that that shouldn't have been there. And now all of that fluid around the head, if it's around the head, it's quite likely to be Down syndrome or some kind kind of thing like that. But it wasn't. It was all over the baby, around the back and under the bum. So she was quite concerned. So she went, I'm just going to bring in the doctor. So I'm like, you, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, well, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. Why do you need to bring in a doctor? Because I don't quite know what's going on. I'm just thinking, there's my baby, there's a heartbeat. It's got this weird line around it. I don't know. So the doctor comes in and she tells me that your baby's got a lot of fluid. It's apparently called high drops. Um, she started talking a bit more. And when they started to talk without understanding like the words that they were using, I wasn't actually, I wasn't actually listening to them vocally. I was actually feeling what they were saying and my energy just went down. And I knew something wasn't right. Literally, the, whatever they'd said, I'd go in one ear and out the other. I wasn't actually quite understanding what they were saying, but I knew it wasn't good. So my eyes started to fill up. I got that lump in my throat. You know, when you have to keep it together and you're like, don't break down, don't break down what's going on. And so I said, okay, so what does it mean? She went, basically, you've got, you've got two options. She went, um, we, can, we can, you know, she said, she basically said the word terminate, but in a different phrase, but I knew she meant end the pregnancy. And I just I don't, don't quite understand and Trent, your baby's very poorly with the amount of fluid that's around baby. It's not going to survive full term. Trent, we can do tests. We can do all this other things on your or Trent, you can go that you can just see how it works out. So anyway, wrapped all that up, wiped my tummy. I, I was still I was almost shocked. I was in shock. I was like, I don't know what's just being said. So anyway, get in, walk out go into the car, go into the car park, get into the car with my partner and burst into tears. And he's like, what, what's going on? So I tell him. And he's like, what? What, what do you mean? And I said, I, I don't know. So we, we went home anyway. They gave me a printout of what the diagnosis was. And we did research. And some of it was positive. Some of it was negative. Some people have had scans where there's been a lot of fluid. But over the weeks and the months, it will have cleared up and baby's healthy. So we were like, oh, God. So anyway, it was... So, we, so what the doctor said, they said, come back in a few days with your partner. Or was it, I think it was the day after. Anyway, we came back and we were both there then because my partner's very, very logical, very, very analytical. He, he understands this, the, the, ling, the lingo with people like that where I'm very emotional. And um, so he was there listening to it all going, okay, okay, okay. So we, we got that. We did another scan. The doctors and, and the midwife showed my partner all of this and, so we both got in the car and driving home, we were both holding each other's hands whilst he was holding the 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 joystick, the gear stick. <laughs> we were both holding each other's hand. Yeah, I don't drive, I just call it a joystick. <laughs> both holding each other's hand and we were sobbing, absolutely sobbing on the way home. We were just, we were speechless. What do we do? What, what do we do? So we got home and it was really dead silent and we, we were just like, I don't get it. So I had this scan photo that I put up on the little mantelpiece by the fire. And our little spaceman did research and it came up. A lot of the time it was pointing towards this thing called Edwards syndrome. So T, T18 or something like that, Edwards syndrome. And, um, and the, the chances are, I think it was one out of, it's very rare. So it's one out of 5,000 babies can, can get it and the the survival rate is like under five percent so and even the the midwives were pointing towards it possible edward syndrome so i was like oh my god and so we did tests we couldn't find anything and well still to this day the I'm actually, i've actually got a genetics appointment on may 6th and um, to talk to them about what, what it was because they still don't really know 
what what it was it was just very rare um but yeah we just want to out really because we did opt for the biopsy to just understand a bit more further so anyway from then all the way up until the 19 19 weeks and six days when I gave birth to Owen and um, we just had to we were almost grieving whilst I was carrying him and it was probably the most painful experience of my whole entire life and I've gone through pain <laughs> I've gone through a lot of pain in regards to the abuse and, and the adoption and, and loss of parents and things like that in the past but this I've never experienced anything like this before and we went back every week like you do routine check go back every week to see how baby's doing because they said to me do you want to terminate I was like no so I feel guilty when I stand on an ant I'm not going to terminate a, a baby inside of me I said I'm going to go natural I'm going to go natural the amazing thing is I have actually a quite a close friend um, who lives in, in Wales who and she's a few years older than me who had a stillbirth called Ruby and she got she was eight months um, she was she's a hairdresser actually and the lady who she was doing a hair was actually um, a midwife and she noticed she was swelling and she said the thing you need to go to get a scan so she went to get a scan and the baby had passed away so she had to give birth to that baby but the thing is why I'm saying that is because I had someone to re refer back to. I had somebody to guide me because I was like, I don't know what to do. Kate, her name was Kate. And I was like, I just, how do you do that? And she goes, it's still here today. She's got two beautiful children of her own now. She went, but we still go visit Ruby in, in the little headstone. And, you know, we, we were still there. But she said, you'll get through it. She went, it's going to be painful. It's going to be one tough journey, but you'll get through it. So I went every week for the scan and every week the fluid kept on increasing around baby Owen every week. And the midwives were actually amazed that he was still alive. They couldn't believe it because we, we'd go and then like, and I said, you know, when he's going to die? Because that's all we were doing. We were waiting for our baby. We were waiting for this little baby inside of me to die so I could deliver him. And I said to her, when will it be? And she said, well, I can't really say that, but she went, it'll be soon. You know, maybe in a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks came, still there, still heartbeat going strong. So I was like, oh my goodness. And one of the reasons we named him Owen is because my partner is Welsh. She's from Wales. And Owen in, in the Welsh meaning, it means warrior, young warrior. And I thought that was beautiful, young warrior. So I thought, yeah, because he's so strong. He's got all this fluid. So we had um, a small little holiday book to Scotland to see a few friends. And I said to my wife, is that still OK to go? She went, yes, yeah, go enjoy yourself you and go and enjoy yourself. And by that time, I could feel him move little butterflies. And I was like, oh, oh, what's this? And my belly was quite extended and my breasts were two times, two sizes bigger than what they are now. And um, and yet so we went and we enjoyed it. And by this point, the friends, we told the friends. And that's another thing that was really difficult because I know we touched on it before, Barbara, about when you're saying you know you didn't necessarily want to tell people and there's people that don't want to tell people but because of the person I am and before getting pregnant I've always been quite honest and quite transparent on social media about mental health about traumas about stuff and people either like it or they don't but it's the reality it's the reality and in order to change things or to prevent things from happening we need to bring about awareness and I have a large following on social media and once I found out that Owen was poorly at 12 weeks up until giving birth I was not really on social media and I got I've got two businesses and one of the other businesses were thriving at the minute at the time it was a natural skincare business and I had a team and I had loads of customers and people were noticing well Samantha's gone quiet on social media what's happening Samantha's gone quiet on social so I still didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell, I only told very close friends and family. And the hardest bit was, if anyone is listening to this and it's happened to them where they've had a child inside of them, but they've known because of some, because of some, something going wrong with the chromosomes, knowing that your baby's not potentially going to live. It's very hard to explain to somebody that you're pregnant, but I had to always say, but. So we're told of quite a few close friends and family um, and a few people that were close to me on social media. And I had to say to them, I've got that. I've got sad news because the first thing when people say I'm pregnant, what does everyone do? Congratulations. Yeah, you were so happy. And then you're like, yeah, but no, it's not nothing to be happy about. So I had to always start off the conversation with them. Um, I've got sad news and 
and this is basically what's happened I, I'm pregnant and so straight away I was already, already warning them to just not jump to the gun and I'd tell them and they were absolutely devastated you know they'd say to me um of all the people it to happen to Samantha of all the people you know you're so kind and positive it's happened to you and you've gone through so much already and I was like I, I, I said I don't know so I just try my best to, to block it all out we carried on um I didn't tell anyone really on social media because I got a lot of fun didn't tell anyone really like that um I'd just gone quiet so I was getting loads of messages Sammy you're okay where are you didn't say anything because I wanted to do that whole here's my 12-week scan Samantha and Andy were having a baby yay you know and this is a boy it's a girl that didn't happen um so through that whole process the worst was obviously feeling the kicks I and mean, then breaking down throughout the whole of it I'd just break down one minute I'd be happy one minute I'd break down the next minute I'd feel them I'd be praying I'd be praying I'd be holding my tummy I'd be saying baby Owen please please get better please 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 get better um, and also I'd be praying if this isn't gonna last please make it end soon please make it end soon because I was also concerned that every time we went the fluid was getting big the fluid was expanding making poor Owen's heartbeat a lot more weak but I was also conscious that if the baby gets any bigger it's the it's then the, the process of giving birth to a bigger baby and the pain of labor anyway so I was freaking out I was thinking what I don't want to go through all this horrendous birth and pain when I'm not going to get anything out of it if at least if, if it's small it's not going to be as painful you, you know I mean in that sense like physically painful down below um so that we came back from Scotland and he was, that was the day when we came back and we did the jigsaw and he was going crazy in my tummy. I'll always remember it. He was going absolutely crazy, moving about crazy, crazy, crazy. And I was like, babe, 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 he's moving, he's moving. Me. And I was so happy, but also so heartbroken because I knew what was coming. I knew he, he wouldn't last. And an interesting thing, I was lying on the bed one evening and my partner remember this and I felt this, this shock pains these sharp pains in, down in my you know sort of uterus and I was like baby I said can you want me a bath please and I couldn't really move and literally we went to the scan a few days after and the heartbeat had stopped and I thought I, I now looking at it I think I wonder if that was my body's way because because I used to type into google do you feel it when the baby's heartbeat stops and people say no you don't feel it mm. but what if you do what if you feel something that, and it felt different and I got in the bath you ran, ran me the bath I was crying went for the scan and no heartbeat so they said to me they said right Sam um we're gonna have to induce you you're gonna have to come in and induce you and to be honest through the whole process I was so incredibly strong and um, some people said I would have terminated that's fine I've each to their own everyone's you know do what you want to do I don't judge and um, but for me I said no I want to I want to see how it goes I want to I want to give them as much of a chance as possible and one thing that helped me get through it was um somebody I can't remember who it was but somebody said to me Sam think of it as your baby Owen is coming to this world and you're the vessel you're the carrier and what you're doing is you're a safe carrier a safe vessel to carry him from this world to the next so think and it was for me it just was like wow it really helped me because I was like wow okay I've got a duty now. I know he's not gonna, he's not gonna be walking and, and things like that on, on planet Earth. But but if I can get him safely to where he wants to go, which was obviously wherever you go when you die. So that helped me get through it a little bit. You get me wrong, it was it was horrendous at times. I just thought, that is so that beautiful. Is so cool. Isn't that, that is so beautiful? Yeah. I think is I think uh, this is why I'm so happy that we are doing these podcasts because it's very important for people to know those things, how to how to deal with a situation as such. And especially when you say this, it's so beautiful. It actually makes me want to cry. <laughs> That's how beautiful it is. It's yeah. so powerful, right? Powerful. Yeah, I'll let you so continue. <laughs> oh, no, Barbara, if you want to say anything or add on to anything or ask me a question, just just shout. Otherwise, I'll, yeah, just, just, <laughs> just say it. But isn't that beautiful? And that that's what really helped me think, oh, okay so it's not all bad I'm a carrier I'm here I'm, I'm this vessel to help them from this world to the next so think of it like that and as as a 
the to get me through it I kept myself busy um one thing with lockdown I didn't want to do anything business related didn't want to contact anyone but one thing that really helped me was jigsaws we did a lot of jigsaws like really big 1,000, 2,000 piece jigsaws. And I'd just do that all the time. I'd sit there with a cup of tea and my Ritz crackers, because that's literally all I could eat. And I'd just do just do jigsaws. And now and again, I would paint, a draw, and um, I'd go for walks. Um, I didn't really want to get out of the house much though, because seeing other children was really triggering, seeing other babies. And, I'm, and it was hard to have a bump. And I remember going into Marks and Spencer's to get some maternity bars, because I'd not got any maternity clothes. And all my, literally, my nipples were poking out my bras <laughs> so I thought <laughs> I need to get something that that's going to support me so I went to Marks and Spencer's and put them down and the lady was lovely and she went oh um oh yeah she went, oh you're pregnant and I said yeah yeah and I thought to myself to save to save this poor lady from listening to you know I didn't want to upset her because that's some I just I just said yeah she went many of you it's little March next year she was like oh I hope it all goes well and in my mind I'm just thinking you just don't know and to be honest I don't really want to put it on you either because it's sad enough people when you hear it it's sad and god forbid all my close friends and family were just heartbroken for me some of them were crying some of them were just so heartbroken for me and even my partner's mum future mother-in-law she even said to me I'm so sorry that it's gotten to the point where you can feel feel him move she went I actually hoped that it didn't get to that point because it makes things a lot harder and it did it did it does. Do you agree that you can feel their soul when they are like you can pick up on their personality when they're inside of you? Yeah, that's a very interesting question, because for me, what I was feeling was he was a very energetic, very joyful and very playful soul. And it's interesting because no one's ever asked me that question. I've not even spoke to this about my partner, but the feeling that I got was he was really fun. And energetic and and just had loads of energy and he was really playful that's what yeah. I got from that yeah and that's what I, I picked up so on weird. with picked up on with both of my children I just felt their personality and I think that's what makes it very hard because if you lose the baby if you do have miscarriage um I would say before before you can hear the heartbeat yeah I would say it's a lot easier however when it goes on and on and on for longer um, it just it just makes it very difficult. But then yeah. I am going to say that um, um, I I had terminated my pregnancy when I was yeah. once in my life. But personally, yeah. I I would not terminate another pregnancy because I have been through the miscarriages and 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 I've been through of feeling their personality and connecting with them. And yeah, I yeah. And it's that's what I mean. I, I joined a few support groups on on Facebook and the amount of people who were, you know, the support was fantastic. A few people agreed going natural, seeing what happens, letting nature play its role. And some people have believe, uh, uh, believed in the incredible interventions of science and that you don't have to suffer this long. You can actually terminate. So for me, I've got no judgment each to their own. Do what feels right at the time, you know, and, and I just said to myself like I don't know what I'd do if it was to happen all over again because it was so painful so I don't know what I'd do but I'm glad that I did give it the time that I gave gave Owen to see if if things would change so I'm very grateful for that there was a book that really helped me through it as well it was by a lady called Zoe Clarks and it was called the baby loss survival guide now she's had five miscarriages and she's gone on to having children and her story is just wow and it, she gives in this book she gives loads of survival tips for people dealing with miscarriage your family how to approach them your job it, it's brilliant and literally just that one book and I got a free little book from Sam's um, bereavement guide a small little guide just and that helped I didn't overwhelm myself with too much just two little books and they really helped me through it but the thing is with with um, it we've got a miscarriage a baby a miscarriage a late miscarriage baby loss a stillbirth baby loss the role in the right, extremely painful and extremely traumatic. And we all, we're all going to grieve. For me, and even I've had friends who have had a miscarriage, you know, a few weeks early, and they have said, you know, it was, you know, horrendous, lots of bleed and all of, all of this to be really hard. But they said, I just wouldn't know what to do if it had gone on and on and on and on. And even to me, I'm sort of in the middle from one of my friends. I'm in the middle and then I've got another friend who went to the just over eight months 
and she had a beautiful little baby girl with really dark hair. So it was like, you know, not, it's, so it's different spectrums. But the thing is, yeah. I want to just, yeah, I want to just say as well, it's still important to validate that you've lost a baby, regardless of how young in pregnancy the baby was. I think it's so important because people get pregnant a few weeks later to lose the baby and think, oh, it, it, it doesn't really matter. It's not important or it, it's not. And it, it it is if it's upsetting and some people feel guilty for being upset that the and it's like you're you're a mother you had a baby no matter how microscopically small it was you had a little tiny soul growing inside of you with a little tiny heart things were you know and and you're going to grieve in your own way so that's the thing I allowed myself to grieve my way I'm still in that grieving process but life is looking a lot more brighter um after so after the telling me that a baby Owen's passed sobbed 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 me and my partner sobbed and then we were like right get everything ready get my baby back together I even bought him bought him a little blue teddy I bought him a blank some blankets um yeah I don't know if I bought him anything else I'm not too sure it's I've got a little memory box now with all these little things in and I was concerned the funny because it's it's things that you little things when you look back on it now me and my partner we can laugh on little things that we we get through a lot of trauma through through little little bits of humor, little bits of laughing, making light heart of the situation. Um, and I think that's one of the great ways of healing. If you can sort of laugh or find a little bit of funniness in it, you can get through it a little bit easier. That, that's just sometimes what I think about. And um, I was there stressing about what he'd wear. <laughs> I remember ringing up the, the midwives going, so have, have you got those little knitted tiny hats for babies? Have you got them? Because I want them to be in like something. And because I was trying to find, she said, I said, what do we need? She was like, okay, overnight bag, some toothbrush, wash bits, PJs, spare this, spare that. She went, you may want to bring a little blankie or a little teddy for Owen. But I was looking everywhere online for miscarriage blankets. And this may be interesting if anyone's watching. There was nothing really out there for tiny babies that are halfway through pregnancy in terms of clothes or blankets that you could buy. It was very difficult so I'm hoping that maybe, maybe as someone has an idea and <laughs> maybe thinks about, but it was very difficult to find. And so what I ended up doing, what we ended up doing, I found a, you know, kitchen tea towels. It was a lovely one in TK Maxx. It was luxury. It was, it had like tassels and it was the perfect size, but it was a tea towel. And I thought, well, no one's going to know. So it was like, that's going to be his blankie. So I bought a pack and that was his blankie. And we went there we got there and there was this one midwife called Dawn and I'll always remember Dawn and I still need to go back to the hospital and give her a card and um, she was just phenomenal in this lovely little bathroom suite it was sort of pri- it was private and she just went through everything with me now it's all from finding out your baby's not well and they're not gonna make it full term is traumatic then to carry that baby for another two months, knowing that he's not going to survive, is traumatic. Then to feel in him and having all these ideas of the possibilities of him being here and, and all the things you could have done with them, but they're not, is traumatic. It, it's very heart-wrenching. But then the actual process of the delivery is an after. That's the thing as well. I think we need more things in place for after. You've got all the yeah. midwife support there. You've got all the midwife support. You've got all the hospital support. But the minute you leave that hospital, it's like, what do you do? You're almost lost. You're almost like a leaf blowing in the wind. You're just like, what do we, what do, we do now? What do we do? And you have to slowly pick yourself up, like step by step, second by second, doing tiny little things every day to just get you by every day. And so when I went into this, in for the, the delivery, they explained what would happen. He said, we'll, we'll induce you. So what, what does that do? I have to take a, a tablet like through my mouth. And he said, you know, the other end. So I was like, oh God. And I don't, I'm very uncomfortable with people going down the other end, but I was like, okay, so partner was there holding my hand and we will have to do, put this tablet in every so many hours until you start to feel the contractions. Put the first one in. We stayed there, watched a bit of TV. Andy went out and got a subway and other bits and bobs and a cup of tea. And then she put another one in. And we were waiting. And then I think it was the third one. Did we did she end up getting the third one in? Maybe got the third one in. But I remember after that, it's about, about eight o'clock, cramps, 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 cramps. 
very severe, severe period cramps. And I was just like, I was like, it's okay. I've, I've read a few and I've got loads of books as well on pregnancy and vegan pregnancy and all this other stuff, mindful pregnancy and on how to breathe and how to stay calm. I took this tiny little book called Mindfulness to keep me in the present moment. I took some healing stones um, some, what did I take? Some lavender balm and lavender spray. I had some amethyst, an amethyst crystal, just things to whatever would help, whatever I thought would help. I had my teddy. I'm very much, I'm still very much a, an, an inner child. I have teddies when I go to bed at night. So I took one of my teddies with me. Um, and they kept on coming in checking. They were lovely. The best midwives I could have ever wished for. Oh, so fantastic. And he just popped in once every few hours to see how I was doing. And then the pain started getting really intense, really intense. And at that point, I started to have a little bit of diarrhea. So I was like, oh, and that can be a reaction of the of the being induced, what the medication does, Trent, it can aggravate the stomach. So I'm sitting on the toilet and he said, every time you sit on the toilet, use this pan because we we know with this process when you feel like you're you're going when you feel like you need a number two it actually can be the the push of the the baby wanting to come out so you don't you know so basically you don't want to lose the baby down the toilet so I'm like oh my god so I was like okay but I actually did have diarrhea and it was horrendous and it was horrible and it then it felt like I was going to be sick at the same time so on the toilet with a bucket underneath me a bucket here and one of the midwives I can't remember her name my partner's really good with names he'd remember her name came in and she went how are you doing and I said I feel like I'm gonna I didn't be sick but it really felt like I was gonna be sick and um, she said right what do you want because they were giving me I think I had painkiller which was like a an I like a paracetamol something like that that was it and these cramps she went well what are you feeling now is the contractions of labor she went that's what you're feeling those contractions everything's contracting so I was like oh my god it's horrendous so she went would you want some diamorphine so I was like what's diamorphine and she went well it eases the pain and all of that so it got to the point with the pain of the diarrhea the pain of the contractions and the stomach pain I was like yeah give me whatever you've got to get rid of the pain so she put this needle in my in my leg and um, it was cold it was a bit stingy but after 20 minutes I felt like I was on a cloud and it was it was amazing yeah I felt like I was on an absolute cloud it was the best and apparently I turned around to my partner and said I think we should bottle this and take it home with us <laughs> he just because I think I wanted in my mind I always want to do everything natural but in a circumstance like that, when you're giving birth to a baby that's passed away a few days earlier in the womb, anything like that to relieve the physical pain is going to help. And it really did help. So um, anyway, she gave me that. I managed to go to sleep, which was lovely. I went to sleep for two hours. I woke up. Um, baby Owen was born at five minutes past two in the morning. Or f- yeah, five minutes past two in the morning. I woke up about... Was it, about 12 or 1 I'm not too sure I woke, I woke up anyway and it's about no it was later than that it was later than that because I woke up and I felt these extreme pains my partner was lying on the pull-out bed in the hospital next to me and I felt these extreme pains I was like oh my god so I ran the toilet put the bucket there and I was there and these pains and I could feel this 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 pain and and I had a shout I went Andy Andy and he got up I was like call the midwife so one of the midwives come through and her name was Liz she was actually a oh, what's the other one's name I can't remember the, the main one but Liz was actually a a trainee she was quite new to all this and I could see it in her eyes I pick up on a lot of people's emotions by their eyes and you could see that she was concerned and she was like you know can you feel pressure Samantha I was like no not really she went, and then the other midwife came in she went, right do you want to get on the bed I said no I want to stay on the toilet let me stay on the toilet I'm gonna give birth to baby I went on the toilet which I knew I was so she went okay and I felt I felt bum bum and I heard bum bum because obviously you've got the the, the little thing mm-hmm. underneath you and I was just holding Liz's hand I was holding Liz's hand I was lifted up a little bit and I just looked at Liz and I said will you check if that's my baby please will you check if that's my baby and she just looked and you could see she didn't want to look you could see that it was so she just went and even because my partner was standing at the doorway and he obviously his recollection's a lot more clear than mine even though I do obtain a lot of detail 
I don't know why it is, but when something's very traumatic, I can obtain quite a lot of detail. And so he said you could even see it on her face. He said you could see she didn't want to look because she felt she was like, I don't know whether, and I don't know whether it was because it may have been a first time, I'm not too sure. And so she looked and she went, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And I was like, okay. And, she, and the other midwife said, come on, we'll get you to the bed. And she clamped me and all this other stuff. And I walked to the bed. And the worst thing was, Barbara, I'm walking over to the bed. And it was literally only like, I don't know, maybe 10 steps, 10 steps, maybe 15 steps from the toilet to the bed. And I had the these clamp scissors stuck to the umbilical cord, swinging between my thighs as I'm walking to the bed. <laughs> that is the reality of it, because I, I gave birth on the toilet. So I walked, walked to the bed with this. And I said to the mid, I said to Liz, I said, I don't want to see baby yet that was another thing they asked me do you want to see your baby and I said don't want to see baby yet because I did a bit of research beforehand what would a you know 19 week baby look like because I had to prepare myself okay it's got more it's reddish skin okay but this obviously I knew that baby Owen had had a lot of fluid which would make him look a bit different so I was quite freaked out by that I was like I don't want to see him I don't want to see him so they took baby away put him in this little room in this little like nice little um like sort of refrig refrigerated cot with his little clothes on and I went back not only that then I had to give birth to the placenta which I again I didn't really know any of this at the time but that was stuck so we had to go into theatre so I was like oh my god so I went into theatre and um, they put me under went into theatre got everything obviously cleaned and removed out of me and that was another thing that again and it's all this after stuff that we don't know about and um, that can be really helpful if we do. So I went, went to the theatre, came back, came through, woke up, and my partner was there. He said, how are you doing? And I said, yeah, I'm just tired. And we stayed in the hospital for another two days after that to see Owen now and again and to just heal because I'm very sensitive to drugs. I am very sensitive to um, con um, conscious, alterating, sub like, conscious drugs. So even if you have a glass of wine, which I'm sort of, I'm on a 30-day reset, I'm not drinking and I'm going to carry on trying not to drink because it just doesn't save me but when I even if I have one glass of wine I feel it all in my body going through my veins I feel it and even the midwife said wow that diamorphine's really knocked her out and my partner said I probably should have said something to you because she's very sensitive to to drugs and things um so I stayed there because they needed to watch over me um we when Owen came in the room I actually have pictures and I've shared a few pictures on social media, not of the baby because I know it's quite a triggering thing, but more of case of me with all my my wires and stuff. And I shared it on my story on Instagram and um, of me with this little baby basket holding baby Owen and his little hand. Yeah, there's a picture on my actual Instagram if you scroll down and it's just it's a little in memory of baby Owen and it's a picture of my finger with his hand on my finger with his little white nails. You can see have you seen him there. have yes. you seen him yes you did and yeah. was it would you say it's a good thing to do or not we would we would never change what we did and um, when we came home every single time even now we always say we are so grateful that we saw him we are so grateful I know some people do not want to see the baby and that's perfectly fine but for me it really helped it actually gave us time to grieve it gave us time to mourn it gave us time to process what we've lost no matter how painful people who are listening to this may have already experienced it and thought I still don't want to see my baby and that's perfectly understandable I understand that because I didn't the next day when I wake up and it must have been about 11 o'clock in the morning and the midwife said do you want to see him and I said, yeah, my partner already knew he wanted to see him even before he was born he said I don't care I want to see him I want to see him so he wanted to see him so he saw him sort of face as he come in and he, she put him down I remember she put this little tiny Moses basket it was adorable tiny little Moses basket on me and a hat was pulled down you could just see his eyes and his little nostrils and his little lips his little mouth was open a little bit and it was <laughs> we, we joked a little bit because I said it looked like um help Boy, you know the movie Hellboy. And if anyone's watched that movie Hellboy, it's a funny fantasy movie. But the, he's all red, and that's what the baby looked like. Um, and and I was very scared to look. I don't know. I was so terrified to look, and I was just peeping over, and I could see a little tiny bit of a red cheek, and I peep, and it just take me time. And then eventually, I got to see him. But because of how fragile with the, it, he was so fragile. 
so fragile. But you know, one thing which is lovely, we've got a, a photo of them downstairs in the living room. And it's a black and white photo. It's in a frame and, and it's it got em like an em embossed wings. It's gorgeous. And it says underneath it, some people, something like some people, some people only dream of angels or something. I held one in my hand and it's mm -hmm. so beautiful. And we we held him and we both held him and we both hugged each other. We both cried and sobbed and just mourned and we held him. And it it was it was beautiful. And then after maybe 10 minutes, I'd say, right, take him away now. And then a few hours would go by and they bring him back and bring him back. And this went on for two days. And the midwife said, you can leave whenever you want to leave. You can leave. And I remember then people coming in and asking me about the funeral service and about the, the what you want and about the autopsy or 11 11. I'm just checking the time <laughs> about the, um, the autopsy and things. And all of this you don't want to hear about. You've just lost your baby. But unfortunately, it's procedure. It's these things they need to talk to you about it. And I was like, I don't want to know. So it's like, oh, so we have to sign things. I didn't even know I was signing. I didn't even know what I was signing. Yeah, you just signed anything um, at that yeah, point, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I when I have when I had mine, my, my stillborn. Well, I call it stillborn, mm -hmm. even though he doesn't count as a stillborn. Yeah. Um, I had the same. Well, um, I delivered uh, the baby at home because I went to the hospital oh. to be induced, and um, and yeah, it was just hours and hours and hours, complete agony. I was in New Zealand that time, and wow. the midwife said to me, "That's done." And, um, and I came home and I started having this crumbs two days later and I actually delivered it home with my, with my partner in, um, in that helped. Um, uh, but it's, it, it is just, do you know what I would like you to talk about? I would like you to talk about the feeling, what happens after when the baby is not a part of you. Yeah. It's yeah. just that yeah. empty feeling of it's gone. Where is yeah. it? Yeah, it's it's ha harrowing. It's harrow. It's that pain. The pain of after was probably the worst pain because it it nearly it nearly ruined our relationship. Now me and my partner were like best friends. We're twin flames of soulmates. We've lived together for twelve years from university. We are like peas in a pod, and it nearly ruined our relationship. We we. And we said, right, we need to talk about what's going on. And it wasn't that we were arguing. We were just so distant. We were just so heartbroken and so distant. And we could feel it. We didn't. It was just, it was really hard. This was weeks after. The first few weeks coming home, we were just hugging and hugging and crying. Um, but the worst thing was leaving Owen. And I remember when we left the hospital, the midwife, Dawn, said he's in, it, it was called the, was it called the snowdrop room? I think it was called the snowdrop or something like that, the snowflake, in that room. And she said, he's there in a little little box, you know, he's safe and whatnot. And um, next door, and my partner said, he said, he said, he said, I could see you as we were walking out. He said, you were looking for that room. And he said, it was, it was heartbreaking to see you looking for him. And, um, and before we left, um, I said, I said, and, she, and even the midwife cottoned on. I was looking for this room, and she went, "Oh, he's in there." And she went, "Do you want to see?" And I said, "Yes, please, yes, please." So she opened it and I saw him, and I was like, "Okay," I was like, "Okay," and we left, and we walked out, we walked around, we walked it, we walked out. My partner had parked by the door. We got in, and I didn't want to leave because once you leave, that is another realization that you've got no baby. And that's one of the worst things for anyone to anyone to have a, a, a stillbirth or a late miscarriage or and to come home empty handed to come home empty handed is and I, also I the know. milk. Also, you have yeah. the milk coming yeah. out as well, which yeah. is another oh, yeah. point of that. strong realisation definitely definitely so not only that which I um yeah so that happened um I had to still be injected 10 days after that with blood thinner in my tummy which my partner did because I hate needles and we both sobbed because I hated it and it was it was it was painful and I was like why just and I just sob I just absolutely sob and I'd be there holding his little his little blankie that had a little bit of his blood on him and it was it was heartbreaking um 
one of the reasons as well, just quickly, I'm grateful that he did get to the age he was because I actually have a necklace with his footprint. I don't know whether you can see, but it, yeah. it's actually his footprint, um, which was lovely because I have that. And I know my friend said, you know, Sam, I, I'm glad that match. It's hard because on one hand, I'm happy he didn't get to the, a, the stage you got, but on the flip side, I'm happy that train, you actually have tangible things. You have like his footprint and you have things like that. So, so anyway, getting home, all of that, appetite didn't eat for didn't really eat at all for the first probably week maybe a bit toast a bit there I was constipated um I was in pain and then the bleeding you know until the bleeding went on for a few weeks and then that was horrible it was always an indication that I'd lost you're always reminded of the loss um I remember I didn't when we got back on the hospital I didn't wash for about two days and I was like right I need to um I need to shower because I stink. So I remember getting in the shower, and we are where our shower is. We have like a long mirror um, on the door, on the back of the door. I remember taking my clothes off because I'm quite body confident anyway. I'm, I'm very open about not being in your birthday suit. It's natural. I think society over sexualizes it and it's all stupid, but it's just a natural. We've all, half the planet have got boobs and a, and a bum and the other bits, and men have got what they've got. So, now, you know, I took my clothes off, looked in my mirror, and I burst out into tears. Because again, my body, it still looked like I had a bump, but I had no baby. You know, my boobs were really big. Um, I had little little dots where the needles had been in my tummy from the blood thinners every day. And I got into the bath and I just sobbed. I stood up. All this stuff was coming out again. The midwife would come around and see how I was doing. Um, and I just felt completely empty. Literally, like someone had got a knife and just ripped my heart open. It was the it's the worst feeling, worst feeling. I don't even know how we how me and you and so many incredible millions of maybe billions of women have gone through this. And we were so resilient and so much stronger than we think, because when we're in that in that moment in time, we feel that there's no we're going to feel like this forever. And that's what it feels like. You're going to feel like this forever. You're going to feel this this heart-wrenching pain of emptiness and just sorrow and despair and so after that um she came back and she said you may lactate I was like oh god it's okay so I remember and it wasn't it was actually so I remember lactating literally two months ago two months ago still not and only not a lot but like a little tiny and they, they gave me tablets after giving birth to stop it from happening but still some bits were coming out. And I said, why, why is this happening? She said, well, sometimes she said, what the tablets will do is it'll stop any more production. But if you've already got stuff in there, it needs to come out and it'll seep out. So that is another heart-wrenchingly painful experience to go through. Your body is thinking you have a child. You've given birth. So your hormones then change to the fact you've got a baby now. You've got a breastfeeder. And this is quite sad. And it really got my partner it really made him very upset um, because I have my teddies and this age came over me one night we were in bed watching tv and I pulled my top down got a teddy and put it next to my, my nipple um it was a bit of a joke but I was like look breastfeeding and I don't know what came over me and my partner said and the next day he got really upset and he said last night was really painful so to see you do that so that had happened and it wasn't all the time it was only seeps and then it eventually stopped and then no one and then again a second thing I've actually kept it I don't know whether you want me I may get it after this and show you on the thing but I've got like a little bag and I love my hair people know that I love my hair um it got really thick through pregnancy I'm really looking after my curls and I lost so much hair um, and I kept it and it's ridiculous how much I lost and I and it, even though right now it looks quite nice, it looks healthy. It's starting, it's stopped falling out now because I'm noticing it. But literally, I put my ha my fingers through my hair, and loads of strands, not one, literally about twenty to thirty strands have come out, and it would just be like, oh my god! I said, and I just remember looking up to the sky and thinking, okay, so you've taken my baby away, I'm breast, I'm, I'm lactating, my bot, my bot, my body's all weird and my belly's all saggy. And now you're making my hair fall out. And I was like, I was just like, why? Just why? But I kept all my hair. And I don't know whether I'm going to do a post with it on one of my personal accounts to go through some of the symptoms of 
after pregnancy because again I didn't know that and I remember speaking to a few people going my hair's fallen out and I said to my partner I've got baldy patches he said no don't worry but I kept it in a bag and there's loads of hair loads of hair apparently it can be quite a normal thing after pregnancy again one thing I didn't realize postpartum yeah. hair loss yeah so yeah I'm it is also like, wow. you get like loads of pimples all over your face yes. and all that kind of stuff and that's what happens usually when um sadly I'm going to say this when the baby dies inside of you yeah um so with mine I could decide if I wanted to if I wanted to um uh, give a birth naturally because obviously yeah. there was no heartbeat or if I uh, get induced but yeah. I just wanted to get induced as soon as possible because I just felt I didn't want it inside of me, if that makes yes. sense. So I was, yeah. I was like, I was like that. But, uh, but I remember I had all these horrible pimples. My hair was falling out. My breath smelled. It's just like this really like strange things what were happening yeah. to body, like extreme sweating and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, People yeah. Don't talk about this, and this is one thing that's crucial. It's, it's almost like, it's, it's like a double, a double trauma. I think when it comes to to baby loss and um, miscarriage, late miscarriage, still, but it's a double whammy, especially especially when you put it into the c category of late miscarriage and baby loss, because you're giving birth, you're pretty much halfway through your pregnancy, you're giving birth to an actual tiny baby, and your body then starts producing. Like that's one thing. A few of my friends who have had early miscarriages, you don't produce milk, your hair doesn't really fall out, your body does. You've not got a bump. You know, you're not got when the baby comes out, it doesn't go all floppy and saggy and, you know, all these. So it's like a double whammy when you when you actually go through a later baby loss. Um, and that that's hard in itself, because not only have you not got a baby, but you're going through all these all these bodily changes that your body believes that you've got a baby there to feed or, you know, and it was it was heartbreaking. It was absolutely. And my heart goes out to everyone out there who has had some form of miscarriage or baby loss the thing is the most important thing is to realize in this pain so that happened so I gave birth to put into bed I gave birth to baby Owen on October 2020 I'm sorry October 22nd in 2020 we're now in April so October October November December January February March April you know it's it's just over six months ago you know things are starting only now to get a bit normal my body's starting to go back to normal my hair's not falling out you know little bits of hair are starting to grow back which I'm like yes you know and things are looking a bit brighter but I am mindful that it is still tough and I am still grieving but remember yourself the pain that you feel within those first six weeks of after giving the birth is going to be probably the worst six weeks of your life but it's going to get better. Because I remember thinking to myself, how is this ever going to get better? I thought there was no way out. But look at me now. I feel, genuinely, I feel quite well in myself. I feel quite well and I feel quite optimistic for the future. But it wasn't long ago where I did want to end my life. And that's another thing that can come with baby loss. So my advice and to help anyone listening now who's going through something similar or who has recently just gone through something similar or even people who know people that are going through it um would be to educate yourself on it that's the first thing just give yourself a little bit of education google's fantastic just go on to google type in how can i help a friend who's having trouble with a miscarriage or baby loss because some people having a support network is key sometimes being mindful that you want to be on your own perfectly fine I wanted to go on my own straight after but having the support network really does help just people checking in checking in on you you don't have to respond back to them but just getting that odd message I was inundated with hundreds of messages because I eventually shared on social media people were just so shocked but I just took my time so just educate yourself on it realize that as, as, as much as it's painful and I know it's a bit of a cliche the, the whole saying that time really does heal wounds time is a great healer give yourself time give yourself time to grieve give yourself time to heal your body like my body now is six months after giving birth it's pretty much all right you know my periods are still on or on 100 but it's taken time six months it's still taking time and I've got a lot of 
background of personal development and meditation and things like that that I've implemented that have almost sped up my healing because I know people who have had baby loss who are still distraught a year to two years after if you need therapy get therapy you know if you need to talk to somebody that is crucial as well definitely definitely get the therapy um I'd also say and I was saying about the the baby loss guide I that book is amazing if there's any other books I don't know whether you'd recommend any books Barbara but I thought that book was fantastic it was survival guide to baby loss baby loss survival guide by zoe clark that really helped me because it just condensed so much advice in one book and there's something that i want to do going forward i definitely want to do and i can share this i'm not doing but i am going to be drawing um, something in relation to miscarriage and baby loss to bring awareness about it because it's something so close to my heart and the more we talk about it, the more we don't feel so alone. It's a, it's a normal, natural experience. But for me, some of the things that I've implemented to help heal have been doing things that uplift me. So whether it was putting some good music on, whether it was going for a nice walk in nature, and it needed to be isolated nature. It couldn't be in a popular park where there was kids and things like that, because that's another tough thing afterwards your friends around you who have just had babies, seeing babies on TV, anything about babies, baby clothes, walking in a shop, seeing little clothes, this is all going to trigger you. It really will. Seeing prams being pushed, it will trigger you. So be mindful. Carry tissues with you if, if you need to, if, if you get upset or take your time. You don't need to go into the world straight away. But going for walks helped me. Practicing gratitude to try and help shift my awareness into something more positive. Um, when it got to the point where I felt so down, where I wanted to end my life, I just wanted to be with Owen. I was like, I want to be with Owen. I don't like this world anymore. I want to be with Owen. I want to kill myself. If it gets to that point and you really feel that low, hold yourself. And journal, journaling was huge for me. I actually have a journal that you can buy off Amazon. It was like a plain journal, but at the front it said letters to my baby in heaven. And it just helped me to write what I wanted to write. And some of it was, why did you leave me? Blah, blah, blah. Some of it was dead nasty, but at least it was out on paper. It wasn't stuck inside of me. It was out on paper. Or I love you. I miss you. We went to see you at your little headstone today in the in the baby garden. You know, we, we did this, we did that. Mummy and daddy are happy now. And, and all of it, it's little things. These are all part of the healing process. Allow yourself to grieve. Don't hold it back. That's another huge tip. Allow yourself to grieve and grieve in whatever way you want. I, after four weeks, no, after about two, three weeks, I drank alcohol pretty much every day. I'm going to be honest with that. I'm not doing that now, but it wasn't loads. It was like the odd one or two glasses to help me sleep, to help me calm my nerves. And that was my way of grieving. Not everyone agreed with it. It's not the best way. But all I'm saying is don't be too harsh on yourself. Don't judge yourself too much. If you need to heal, hopefully it's not, not going to be very detrimental to your health, but just realize we grieve and heal in our own different way. Give yourself time, give yourself space. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's helped. Well, yeah. Absolutely. I would like to add um, two more things. And one is that nobody is failing if they cannot have a child. Um, I would look at it as a nature from a nature point of view. Yeah. Um, so nature has decided differently. So that's the one thing which I would like to add. And the last thing which I would like to add that whoever is listening, if you went through this situation or if you know somebody who went through this situation, you are not alone and they are not alone because there are so many women out there who um, suffered miscarriages and a baby loss. Thank you very much, Samantha, for being on my podcast. My last question for you is where can listeners find you and get in contact with you? Uh, and well, a lot of people can find me over on, I'm more active over on my Instagram, which is my name. So Samantha underscore Messias underscore art or my website, which is exactly the same with dot com um, at the end. And yet yeah, you can DM me or follow me. Um, I'm definitely wanting to do more awareness pieces around miscarriage. And this has just been fantastic, Barbara. Absolutely. I've been so blessed and so honoured to share this virtual space with you um, and just talk about a subject that is very, very common, but it's not talked about. So I am very, very grateful that we've had the time to talk about it. So thank you so much. 
Thank you for listening. I hope you have enjoyed this episode and that you have gained a lot of information. As I have just launched this podcast, I have decided to give two lucky listeners a free psychic reading each month for the period of next three months. These readings will be a combination of a tarot and a psychic channeling. To enter, all you need to do is leave a review in the iTunes store, take a screenshot of it, send it to me on barbaramayshow at gmail.com, which is B-A-R-B-R-A-M-A-Y-S-H-O-W at gmail.com. As you may already know, um, reviews are very important for podcasts and they will help podcasts to expand and direct the important topics discussed to the appropriate audience. At the end of every month, I will announce the winner on my Instagram, which is at The Barbara May Show. So keep your eyes peeled and I cannot wait to see you 